Hey! Hi everyone, welcome to Nicole's first time doing the thing. Um, welcome to our election night special of Born Under Punches. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, please don't mind the technical difficulties. It's going great over here. Everything's situation normal. Totally fine. Um, I'm the host, Nicole, and um, this is my co-host, Kelly. Come on out, Kelly. You gotta simulate the applause so that I can mm. feel like I'm walking onto the stage. Oh, I love it. Oh, it's good. It's good. What's good, America? I mean, what what would we be if we didn't have technical difficulties? Would it even be the same show? That's Probably my question. But I'm already realizing the flaw in my plan. Mm-hmm. Were you on the end? Because a minute ago, I was sitting in the good chair. Yep. Now I'm sitting in the dining chair. I was totally willing to switch you plates just so that I could get the good chair. So Yeah. Um, well, am I eating off your plate? Yes. Do you want your plate back? <laughs> That's okay. I mean, I don't, same too. I, I, I arranged mine all weird. You don't... Yeah, you, yeah, you put chutney on your naan. That's yeah, weird. Yeah, is that bad? I, I just know. I saw bread and I saw a spread and I thought it was supposed to go on. I don't know how to Indian. I don't, I don't know how to eat. Okay, let me just... We, we can also unmute Josh. Yeah, I guess. Hi. Um, welcome to the show, Thank you. Uh, about time. Here I am standing here just hearing stuff about Indian food that I don't even get to eat. I'm stuck here with a barley shochu and tonic water. Mm-hmm. That, that's my dinner tonight because it's an election night and I'm going to exist off of alcohol and spite as a result of it. I feel that. If it makes you feel better, Josh, it's really good. That does that does make me feel better because you're complimenting my friend, and that's the kind of whole, wholesomeness that we appreciate on this show. You're assuming that Nicole made it, and I didn't come over here and make it all myself. No, you told me earlier. Remember, off scene, behind the scenes. <laughs> that was that was for your ears only. <laughs> the betrayal <laughs> here. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So right. yeah, when do I, mean, I guess the the polls close in half an hour, and that's when we start to really start to get s- seeing results. I guess would be the best way of saying it. Yeah, well, you know, it's going to be a long haul show as we kind of sit, uh, settle in for the next six hours of uh-huh. watching results. Um, well, that's then right. Two hour commentary afterwards, and yeah, yeah. So that's uh, let's just round it up to an even ten hour show. Uh-huh. Woo! No breaks. We're on our David Blaine shit. It's okay. I brought a bottle. Does David Blaine not go to the bathroom? Um, I feel like that's most of his stunts is just how long he can go without pissing. Hmm. Unless he pissed in that fishbowl thing he was in, and he was just, like, surrounded by piss water. I don't know. I mean, it's sterile, I guess? Yeah. Okay, we're going to attempt to view the map. Are you ready? Let's take a peek here. Uh, live results. Are you seeing what we're seeing? Well, we're seeing uh, about what you'd expect from the Maritimes. Mm-hmm. See, I'm suspicious of the Maritimes. Oh, yeah? And here's why. Like, every single election, without fail, they're always the ones who were so sure of their election results at first, you know? Alberta is usually one of the last ones. And I feel like that's because, you know, we're we're just, you know, being more careful with our vote counting, you know? Definitely. We got to make sure that every one of those blue ballots makes it into the counters. Yeah, I was I was on here. Yeah, yeah it's very uncertain how the writings in Alberta are going to go. Mm-hmm. But, it's you know, a, like, it's a, it is I, a mystery. I pulled up this map like 45 minutes ago and Newfoundland was already calling writings. Like, what, what do they know that we don't? What are they doing over there? Well, I mean... They're probably already drinking. I mean, it's like, what, down near 10, 1030 in that area? Mm-hmm. Those, guys, those guys can drink their sores away already. I mean, let's be real. What time did you start drinking today? Uh, what time is it now? Mm-hmm. Seven? It is seven o'clock. Yeah, I started literally drinking five minutes ago because I didn't want to be horrendously drunk by the time you guys arrived. That's very mm-hmm. courteous of you. Well, uh, you know, it's election night. 
I uh, yeah, I do have a theory about this mm, Maritimes thing. It's like you know, there's been this narrative where Alberta, we're you know, certainly certainly a lot of Albertans seem to think that like you know the East doesn't really care about Alberta. We're at a disadvantage. You know, we're we're kind of we're kind of just off on the outskirts and nobody cares. And I think maybe that might be the thing is, uh, you know, nobody really cares about Alberta. So we might like be counting our votes at the same time, but like they're just posting them later because they don't give a shit. That that's, could that's be valid. Mm -hmm. Oh, you think this is a power that be problem? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah. As we all know, Alberta is, you know, horribly persecuted. Yeah. The most neglected of all the provinces. Right. That East Coast bias. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Alberta advantage. More like <laughs> Alberta, Alberta disadvantage. Got him. Got him. That was that was top tier. Thank you. I really, I'm, this is the kind of quality that I I've come to expect from you. Mm -hmm. Let's put it that way. I'm quite proud of it. Mm -hmm. You got a the camera got a widescreen mode. Um, I'm being cut in half like I'm Lloyd Minster. <laughs> hey, oh, that's an Alberta <laughs> Saskatchewan joke for you, Saskatchewanites that's out there right. watching. <laughs> well, I mean, the, if there's Saskatchewan viewers, well, I know actually, you're your fans. Let's work harder, not smarter, not harder. Let's just turn the computer instead of both of us scooching work over. Work harder, not smarter. That's right. So, yeah, it feels like I've been doing that for years. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. I actually... Uh, I have a guest panelist for us today, actually. Oh, my goodness. Is there like a star puppet that you hold up? I'll be right back. I'm just going to go grab her. <laughs> Is it his fucking cat or something? Is this the whole bit? <laughs> just let him bring the cat out. Uh, it's a very cute cat. You're going to love it. Is it a new cat or is this? Mm -hmm. That's a brand new cat. New cat who dis? <laughs> <laughs> no. I can start answering texts from people I don't like. They'll be like, hey, Kelly, what's up? And I'll be like, sorry, I got a new cat. Like, <laughs> yeah. Can you no, tell it's... me? It's readjusted all of my... Oh, wait, hold on. We have to pin you here. Mm. So this is our uh, our expert on the dark horse candidates right here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Sasha, do you have a comment? Nope, she's biding her time. <laughs> she just rolled her eyes. That's how I feel about the well, election. She doesn't, want, she doesn't want to call anything too early. Mm. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. That's, she's going back to her data boards now, actually. I, I think they might be more uh, on point than ours. Mm. What does she know that we don't? Mm. Probably that her food bowl is empty. She's going to start screaming at me at some point. Mm. Well, yeah, get the mic to her then. <laughs> oh, man. So Josh is our political expert as well as our uh, gaming expert. So can you tell us what you think your predictions are? I mean, I honestly think that this is going to be one of those times where we just had a pointless snap election, which mm -hmm. does seem to fall in line with what liberals tend to do after being a certain amount of time in power. Because any projections that you look at right now are saying probably a liberal minority and... Mm -hmm. Cool. I'm glad that we spent all this time and money on literally maintaining the status quo. The only things that might change are a couple of ridings here in Alberta um, in terms of like major representation, because that would mean that outside of BC, there might actually be a non-conservative MP in the West, which mm. you know, would be nice. Which, who do you, what do you think is going to happen there? Do you think it's there that some are going to flip liberal or do you think some are going to flip like further right? Uh, when, well, the liberal candidate for my area came by uh, a few weeks ago to sort of chat a little bit. And um, based on what I've heard, I've heard that there's one potential riding. I don't know which one in here in Edmonton mm -hmm. that could go NDP. And then the one that I'm in Edmonton center is a toss up between the liberal candidate and the conservative candidate. Mm. Um, with the conservative, of course, holding on to it right now, uh, a James Cummings, and mm -hmm. then uh, Randy Boissonneau is the potential incumbent. Okay. Well, I would say I'm I'm just looking at Edmonton Strathcona right now. I feel like everyone's doing pretty bad. I mean, this is zero percent for Heather McPherson. Yeah, it's really neck and neck here. This is just zero percent for Hebel Muhammad. Just dead on arrival, eh? 
I don't know. I don't use an axe. I can write. Okay, um, zero percent for Tunde Obasan and to, his name is Kelly Green. That's adorable. Um, I wish I'd voted for this dude. I didn't notice this when I was voting, but the dude's name is Kelly Green. Mm -hmm. Wait, is he the Green candidate or is he the Inglorious People's Party candidate? Inglorious People's Party. <laughs> I just said glorious. I just want to scroll. I just want to. There we go. Oh, he's, he's the Green, Green Party guy. candidate. Yes. It's an appropriate name here because the People Party guy is named Jackie, and I think that's also very accurate. That's yeah, it's accurate to the People's Party. I also uh, feel like it's very appropriate that the Libertarian candidate has no photo. I feel like this is like a sovereign citizen play where he's like, <laughs> you know what? if I'm not photographed on the ballot, I haven't made a contract with the Corporation of Canada. <laughs> um. So. I don't know if you saw this, Nicole, because I'm pretty sure that's, yeah, that's on my end. Don't worry about it. Cops okay. aren't coming to your door. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you saw on Facebook because uh, someone posted it, the Rhino Party candidate in Grand Prairie. Yeah, I did see that. Yeah. So the Rhino Party candidate took a picture of himself in his underwear outside of the Daily Herald Tribune because he wasn't mentioned in their, like, um, candidate breakdown. And then so he so he sent in a message. He's like, "Hey, by the way, I'm actually an officially registered candidate here." And instead of like just being like, "This is the dude right here," they just like did a whole paragraph on something else instead. Yeah, they, I think they inserted the phrase "list of candidates is not exhaustive." And yeah, that was their coverage of the Rhino Party. Instead of just being like, "And for the Rhino Party, here's uh, so and so extra." I can't remember his first name at the moment. Yeah. So one thing I loved about him is that. I, because I was like, oh, he took a picture in his underwear, like just to like embarrass the Daily Herald Tribune. Also, it was he was adding to his campaign promises that he's going to make them change their name to the Dumb Herald Tribune. Ah, uh, yes, I remember that. Yeah. Um, but I love that. So I clicked on his Facebook page, to because I was like, oh, what's this guy about? All of his pictures are in his underwear. I love it. Every single one. That's how he's marketing himself. Committing to the bit. I can appreciate that. Absolutely. But uh, so, did these Rhino Party candidates um, like? Did they actually submit candidates as a proper party this time? I mean, I th or are they just think yelling so? at newspapers that they're running. I think they actually registered this time, but let's look into that. Actually, um, yeah. and I will acknowledge that I was not actually broadcasting the screen when we were looking. You sure weren't. candidates. I wish you'd said something, but you know, I thought that you were just doing something like. No, I thought you were just busy. No, I, I got this all set up. So, uh, yeah. so I mean, but let's go through this right now. You know, we got we got your James coming. Who there's there's nothing funny about this. So like, no jokes <laughs> to be made there. We'll move on. And I would like to note, like, let's just appreciate this moment in Albertan politics when the Conservative Party candidate is tied with the Marxist Leninist candidate. <laughs> uh, also. The, the the Brock Crocker looks like somebody like like paparazzi him like caught him off guard and took that picture. <laughs> That's the one that he volunteered. Yeah, yeah like he kind of looks like that. Like uh, Mr. Crocker, can we get a comment? And like they shoved the camera in his face. He's like, mm -hmm. Yeah, the lighting's a little off. It looks a little bit like my driver's license photo, to be honest. Maybe that's what he submitted. <laughs> <laughs> Brock Crocker is very like that kind of sounds like what a children's cartoon would like nickname a bully. And that's probably, <laughs> how would, that's probably how they would draw him. And based on being a People's Party candidate, I feel like he has a personality to match. Oh, probably. I'm actually so, amazed that People's Party has continued to field candidates after their extremely embarrassing showing last election. Okay, so this is this is still the same Maxime Bernier party. Yeah, this is still Maxime Bernier. Right, and he lost his own riding last time, right? Yes, he lost his own riding because not enough crazy people voted for him. Right, so okay, what's our prediction on whether Maxime Bernier wins this year? Uh, I've seen that his riding numbers have actually gone up. I don't know if I can see him winning his seat, but he might be a second or third like place candidate this time. Instead Ooh. of just, like, dead last. I mean, I guess the difference is that, like, last election, the People's Party didn't really have anything to, like, 
promote that I remember, other than just being angry. But now they can actually actively court the anti-vaxxer crowd, which is you know, well, which is what the, what crowd. they've been doing. Yeah, they were they were being angry and also being racist. So that's like a two. That's at least two platforms. It's better than the Green Party. Yeah. Okay. Um, I also am really appreciating you guys can't see, but Kelly's eating this naan like it's a pancake. Like with like he's like cutting it up with his fork. Yeah, that's how you eat naan, right? Pieces. Listen, oh, if no. you're gonna make me food and not attach instructions on how to eat it, I'm gonna <laughs> eat it in the worst possible way. Um, it's just an immutable law. Fun fact uh, about Randy Boissonneau here. Um, actually, when I lived at the house. He was in the on the same area as uh, the rest of us there. Oh, yeah. So he was yeah. the one that lived like a couple houses down, hey? Eh? Yeah, yeah, that'd be him. Hey. I really appreciate that you keep making references in in the show to the house. The house. It's and a mystery. Like no other explanation. It is the mystery. The mm. dark past, the house. Well, I mean that's where most people live, the house, right? You know? When you say I'm going to the mall, no one needs to know which mall it is. People just know you're going to the mall. I lived in the house. I went to the mall. I went to the job. This is how people talk. <laughs> <The job>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I gotta, I gotta go home and I gotta go home and spend time with the wife. You know, it's all <laughs> That's actually that's valid. I've got, uh, no, yeah, I guess yeah. You don't you don't say I guess the job is maybe not such a thing, but like you always say that's, the the job is up there with the Google for things that <laughs> people say. Mm. I always That's appreciate okay. when people say the wife because, like, I feel like it's a great insight into your relationship dynamics and how you feel about each other. Mm -hmm. Bonus points if you say the old lady. Mm. <laughs> Especially when she's younger than you. The old ball and chain. The old ball and chain. My uh, dad told me that his, like, sign off, I guess, like, you know, in person sign off was I uh, used to be say hello to your wife and my kids, which oh is very, God. very, like, progressive and like cool that my dad was so open with uh polyamory but like yeah kind of crazy right mm -hmm. before his time yeah absolutely mm -hmm. <laughs> now we did already get in the joke about the libertarian candidates having no photo um but for the marxist Lenin candidates having no photo i think we should shoehorn in a joke about like stalin photoshopping them out of history yeah absolutely yeah. so actually like that's a thing, right? He made himself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here. Well, he also just cut people out of it, which was mm -hmm. nifty. Um, so, is there a Communist Party of Canada and a Marxist Leninist Party of Canada? Because it seems like they're just splitting the vote at that point. I'm not entirely sure, but some people uh, were just going over like the recent like Russian polling, which I mean, how accurate is it? I don't know. But apparently, Russia has like three different communist parties, and they all hate each other. Yep. <laughs> like, yeah, they are, do. Are they all controlled opposition? Maybe. Like, like, does it matter when they're splitting their votes when Putin's party is apparently pulling at eighty six percent, which is you know down from last time? Oh well, yes, there is a communist party of Canada, by the way. And can we give a happy one hundredth birthday to the? Communist Party of Canada, as they were founded on May 28th, 1921. Oh my god, we missed it. Aww. We missed the Communist Party of Canada's 100th birthday. See, this is what happens when you don't have a Facebook profile, is that nobody remembers your birthday. Mm. Also, apparently, it is the second oldest active party after the Liberal Party. Hell yeah. Wow. <laughs> but the Liberal Party is the real Communist Party, am I right, uh, Facebook followers? <laughs> oh man i love it when people call like the liberal party like communists or fascists or anything of that degree considering like the liberal party is like the most milk toast progressive party out there like they're like progressive and <laughs> they're progressive the same way the fucking progressive conservatives are they say they are and that's about it yeah remember when we had progressive conservatives <laughs> that was a great time no uh, don't. Oh, i actually man. don't either mm. Pretty sure that the reform party was made in '93, and then it was all downhill from there. Mm. I also um, lost my train of thought. Go on, I'll put it you uh, I wasn't going to go on too much, other than like the reform party. I believe was another Alberta contribution to the rest of the country, yeah. aka making the conservatives even worse somehow. 
Is that mm-hmm. like the thing that like is that like our thing? Is that our contribution to politics? Because like now there's the Maverick Party and like. Well, yeah, because we had the alliance, and that's what gave us Stephen Harper. I noticed that there's no Maverick candidate for which which riding is this? Um, before uh, we leave this tab, I just do want to comment that oh, 100 percent of the NDP candidates so far have been named Heather McSomething. <laughs> so let's see. Is this a plot? Uh, that's Edmonton Center. That's my riding right there. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's why I clicked on. Well, I listen. Who are you going to vote for if you can't vote Maverick? Oof. I mean, I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna have to go with the People's Party. Like, it, it's right there in the name, guys. People's Party. Right. Yep. That, that's Who like a tough guy, like Brock Crocker. And you're like, <laughs> that's, Brock Crocker. that's a candidate's name you can set your watch to. <laughs> that's definitely like that could be like a like if there was new Fast and the Furious character too. His name would be Brock Crocker. Yeah, for sure. Or like if there was like a buddy cop show, like Brock Crocker would definitely be like the hard ass cop that's like. Been in, it, been in it too long and like knows that you just got to fucking bust some heads to get results and the best way to get like a confession out of someone is to beat the shit out of them. This is 100% what Brock Harker believes. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the thing that I think is because it's called the People's Party, do you know what that tells me? It tells me it's a socialist party. Because if you look back, you go, the People's Republic of China, mm-hmm. that's a communist party. The Democratic People's Republic of Korea, another communist party. So it's telling me that these guys aren't actually super right wing. They're super left wing. It's right yeah, there in the I name. That, didn't I make that joke during our last show? That does sound, yeah. it does sound familiar. I was like, I feel like. Did I, I just rip off your joke? Well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that is that is the joke I have been making in true white guy fashion. Every time I enter a new group of people, <laughs> yeah. it comes up. And then I kind of smugly like let it out as if I made it the first time, you know? I mean, that's that, as a white person, that's the only way you can make jokes. You have like six and you just rotate them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, fi- I finally rotated out. That means it's free, right? When someone scans your groceries and they won't go. <laughs> oh, God. Here's an important fact, though. And maybe this will never work here. But when I was in Australia at, like, Woolworths or whatever, and I couldn't scan a, um, a it was a cantaloupe, or as they call it, a rock melon. And Sorry, a what? They call it a rock melon. Ah, gotcha. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, can I can I have this rock melon, please, ma'am? And they they picked it up and they were trying to scan it and it wouldn't scan. She couldn't like I but I looked up in the like the no barcode section. It's just it's, it's not there. A very like mainstream common fruit, just not there. And so I looked at her and I'm like, what happens now? And she's like, I guess you can have it for free. And I got it for free. Hell yeah. Yeah. That is the rule. Well, uh... That's why you ask every time. <laughs> I have uh, I have some some political news regarding the People's Party. Uh-oh. All right. Well, before we leave this tab, does anybody have any good riffs for Randy Bassano? He's the only one we didn't. Um, uh, something, something. I don't know. I, I would say, like, no, I got nothing. All right. Moving on. What was your thing? Uh, according to... Um, EKOS, whose polling had been driving the narrative of a huge PPC surge, had the PPC at Atlantic Canada in their final update, and they're currently at 4.6% of the vote there. So I think that if there is a narrative of a PPP surge, PP surge, <laughs> um, I, I, I don't see it happening if that's already how the trend is going to go. Maybe a bump in Alberta and Saskatchewan because... You know, I, d- I don't think I need to say it. Mm. You, you know how I think we were even talking about this during our last show, but the whole trend of like being extremely clever by like twisting your political opponents like party names to sound like insidious, you know, like calling Democrats demon rats yes. or this extremely proud of himself caller who called into Ched once and he's like, yeah, so the NDP, or as I like to call them, not least destructive policies. Um, hey. Yeah, that's you, not bad. You get a lot. Yeah, of I was gonna say. He, to be fair, though, he should be proud of that one. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, or like sometimes people will be like conservatives, like the Conaghy. I think that's yeah. one. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I've always gone with cons. Yeah, yeah, conservative yeah. is the one. Yeah, I I've a seen lot. that, and then UCP, the Unlimited Corruption Party. And like, I mean, they're owning that one at the moment. Well, but that's uh, that's lazy because you kept the same letter for P, and I just don't subscribe to that. 
so um, it sounds like there might be a leadership review going up in the UPC coming up in the near future. Like the the barcode scanning like party, the UPC. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. The sure. UCP. You can't. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it sounds like there might be a leadership review coming up there soon because I don't know if the party head is too happy with um, Kenny at the moment. Yeah, is it because for he, whatever reason? Is it because he's like the least popular <coughs> premier in Canada by like a margin? <laughs> yeah, by like a lot. Yeah, like I think he's at twenty three percent at the moment. Oof. Now the party head may not be happy with Kenny, but I can say from the last time I went to a party, which is like twenty nineteen that I've been happy with the party head. Ah. It's just so much nicer when I can just look at someone when I'm making a joke. <laughs> yeah. I can just stare, stare at them expectantly. <laughs> it's so much it. it's like, wait. I, I, I deliver the joke by staring into the camera and then I keep staring into the camera. But now I get to do. And then I, whether or not I get it, I, I know that I should laugh, so I can. Yeah. So you just you just give that pity laugh at the very least. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I do like I feel like I usually understand a, a head joke, so I did get that one. But perfect, perfect. Well, I've already burned through my barley shochu and uh, tonic water, so I'm probably gonna have to crack open a bottle of wine yet. Okay. Well, yeah. What happened? What? How, where did we land on that beer situation? I set it on the table in front of you, and then you walked away from it. That doesn't so. sound like something I would do. Well, while I go get that beer, I'll I'll leave this to stew on. Is that this is why I brought up the making fun of party names thing? Is I think that like extremely corny liberal people on the internet are going to be started calling the People's Party like the the PP of Canada. Mm-hmm. Be like, oh yeah, they're voting for PP. Somebody on Twitter is going to be doing this. I guarantee. Well, it. I mean, I don't think they really have a moral high ground considering it's a Liberal Party uh, guy who had his fucking dick out <laughs> live on Parliament. Yeah, that was great. Oh man, and it's like, mean? what do you what do you say to that when it happens twice? I mean, well, what's tell politics without a little porn? Well, and this is the thing, like, this is this is what happens when, I, like, my international buddies I play games with, whenever they talk about Canadian politics, I know it's going to be something along those lines, because nobody actually talks about Canadian politics outside of Canada, because it's boring as shit, but every so often, something like Rod Ford sneaks out, where it's just like, it's like, hey guys, did one of your mayors smoke crack? And you're like, <laughs> yep, he did, or... Did one of your parliamentarians get his dick out on stream during a parliament session? He sure did. Twice. I forgot about a that. A proud part of our Canadian heritage. <laughs> yeah, heritage moment right there. Okay, are you, you going to resolve this beer situation? I mean, I'm not going to take a beer from my boyfriend, but I'll we'll see if I got have something else that you can drink. Well, there were three, weren't there? There were two. The one was a ginger beer, which is decidedly not a beer. That's fair. But yeah, how did you forget about the guy getting his dick out? Because the number of people that have had their dicks out on a Zoom call in the past, like, you know, year and a half, they're completely lost count. That's fair. It, it seems was, to be a common problem. There was like, like, like New York Times or whoever, jack off dude. And then there was like the Spanish politician who was like fucking his mistress on the camera. Which, which amazing. <laughs> yeah. And um. Then, the, the, this one was the, the guy from Parliament, like he arguably was just like not like it was like a closed. I don't know. I remember they, they did an episode on Canaland about it where they were like, it's kind of shitty that this dude who like by the nature of his job has to like be working from a home office and then like have to do these like changes and like he totally fucked up. But then the fact that opposition like leaked his like nude images of him to the rest of the internet. It's like, I don't know. They phrase it so much more eloquently than me. I don't know. I, I'd feel more like on the side of that argument if this didn't happen twice. Like, fool Is me once. True? Yeah. Yeah. It was the same dude twice. Uh, it's like, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me kind of deal. Where it's just like, I don't know, man. 
I feel like after the first time, after you show your dick to Parliament once, I think you might spend time learning Zoom enough to not do it again. Yeah, I guess so. So, all right, let's take a little dip into the results here. Because okay. I'm, I'm genuinely, oh, oh, there's a free party. I don't know. Let's let's look into what the free party is. Please hold. Yeah, you look into the free party. Um, I'm very like this must be just insanely early reporting because they like they have 20 votes in or how the fuck does this work? All right, let's take a look at this. Uh, uh oh, it's all in French. My French is don't know. Here we go. No, no, no. Read it aloud in French. I want to hear it. Um, I I need to get the about first. Is this the about? Okay. I have no idea. Uh, I'm, I'm focusing on a beer situation. Okay, so I've, I've clicked on their about thing for the uh, Parti Libre Canada. Um, and it's free to create together responsible economy, fairness, mindfulness, integrity, wisdom and evolution, respect, freedom, sharing, solidarity, love, truth, knowledge. And so that's all that's for their about thing. I'm guessing they... it's I'm guessing it's like a hippie anti-vax party, like a left-wing anti-vax, like the yeah. They look to be a Quebec party. I'm a little upset that they ripped off my wedding vows, but <laughs> uh let's look at their program. Um these here are the four themes around which we are proposing to gather everyone in order to form a Canadian global mu movement of united and caring humans. I think you might be onto the hippie thing here. Uh, well, number I mean, one, short intention, which nobody uses but hippies uses. Uh, number one, reestablish a healthy, harmonized, and balanced social climate with respect for all life. Two. Uh oh, here comes the anti-vax part. <laughs> that means they don't want women's rights. Here comes the anti-vax part. Oh yay! Number two, immediately demand the suspension of the experimental COVID nineteen injection for the entire population. Which oh, they're not even against passports. Like, they're against administering it to anyone? Yes, they want suspension of the entire program. So, okay, so what party is this? This, this is the free, the free party. party. The free party of oh, Canada. It the Duke. No, it's Monique, Monique Leduc. She oh, got sorry, nine votes. Really look at. Yeah, I don't know how the vote tabulation works. I don't know if it's, like, I truly don't know. Number three urgently require an independent and public national inquiry into the management of the pandemic. Actually, I could get behind that. Uh, huh, I know who's getting my vote now. Uh, number four, immediately begin the process of establishing a direct democ No, direct democracy does not work. Oh, they're the direct democracy party. Direct re democracy requires that every voter be informed and we all know that there are barely any informed voters. Hell, I would not even consider myself an informed voter, and I spend time reading policy. <laughs> so what you're arguing for is some sort of dictatorship, right? You just, uh, def you just want like a national daddy to tell you what to do? Uh, well. <laughs> We're all just fucking democratic subs. Uh, I was about to say, I, I simp for the democratic daddy. Mm. Oh, that's, uh, there's no better time for our banner than right now. <laughs> 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 this is the only one I kept from last time. That's fair. Oh uh, man, let's see. So sorry, did you say they got nine votes that uh, free party? Well, they, did. they okay, but this was where like the leading thing had like twenty votes. Yeah, so, so it's it's just yeah one poll par uh, one poll out of two hundred and fifty three. That's why. So they just yeah. started counting. They are they are only one vote behind the conservatives. If that tells you anything. Yeah, I mean, as it stands, uh, it, it does look like it's going to be a like liberal <laughs> thing if the, if they can trends continue. I don't know what this uh, riding actually is. Whether it's like rural city, a little bit of both. I, I love that you can kind of tell, um, like a lot of like Quebecois names from, you know, like proper French names. Um, Cause the people in France just have all these, like, I don't know, like, like my last name, it doesn't mean anything. You don't like know the etymology of like Gaumont is, 
But as soon as you get into like Quebec settlers, and I don't know, I guess people were like, let's pick some new names. They're always extremely fucking literal, like La Vallée, or in this case, Des Trois Maisons. Like this dude, this dude had three houses. Like, were they just saying his ancestor was rich or something? Yeah, three fucking houses. Yeah, they're just or did he live in up. the alley between the three houses? Oh, good point. I've I've never seen I've, I don't think I've ever seen like a three word French name before. Could be wrong. I mean, this could be the it, it could just be a case of yeah, look at that motherfucker. They, he's got three houses. The rest of us only have one. Mm -hmm. What a fucking guy. Well, I also feel like you kind of choose your own like legal name. So like, definitely it was that guy being like, "Fuck you, I have three houses." That's true, that's true. And then you have uh, Michel Welt. <laughs> oh. Yikes. Yeah, these are some very French names. I guess Ottawa Louis, is like hella French. Louis says, would that be like a... Would that be like Louis the Sixteenth? Is that maybe. like a callback to like King Louis? I was oh, going to say that if this guy's got Trois Maisons, maybe we should Louis seize his assets. Ah, mm. uh, ah. Uh, uh, this is how Although it is the conservatives, so they're definitely not going to do that. So they're definitely not going to do that. Well, this is this is how we're going to win win more fans over is with uh, with the bilingual puns. <laughs> well, my French is garbage, so I'm going to be leaning on you guys for that one. So Green is leading a riding in not BC. Is this is this normal? I mean, hmm. oh, damn. I mean, they've had up to like three seats before, and they are hella leading. I mean, oh, this oh, is sorry. That's that's fifty four votes for them. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. One out of two hundred twenty three. Canada polls. is the second next one there. So. Hell yeah, the Greens followed by the Free Party. Well, everyone's gonna love nature here. Yeah, we're gonna watch and, and potentially not vaccines. Get to know where's that? Uh, that get to know. It's you know, uh, it's yeah. That's like get Ottawa. Ottawa. No, get I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I got. I gotta know. Where is it? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's how I'm gonna like very quickly say it if somebody asks me something I don't know the answer to. Be like, hey, uh, um, what are you up to this weekend? Gotta know. Gotta know. Gotta know. That's good. Uh, let's find out who won this last year. If you actually go on a trip year. to Gatineau and you don't want to tell anyone, you can answer the same way. Gatineau. What was the uh, last one? It was 2019. Uh, well, if you just click on the riding, it should say the incumbent. Well, it didn't. Uh, uh, it might be fresh candidates then? Could be. No, there no, it is. The liberal. The liberal. Yeah, Steve McKinnon. He's only on one vote. Again, very early. Very early. Too too yeah. soon to call. This is why we're watching this. Uh, I want to know who what the Green Party won during the last one. Uh, I think they had two seats. Let's figure out which ones. 2019 Canadian Federal Election. Why the fuck not? Uh, God, I don't even remember the name of this Yves Francois Blanchet. Oh, no. Wait, is he uh, still the guy? Who is? Yves yeah. Blanchet, yeah. Uh, he is still the Parti Québécois leader. I, I think I just still thought. Or Bloc Québécois, Québécois, sorry. It's just forever Gilles Decep in my head. <laughs> Gilles Decep hasn't been like the leader of the Bloc Québécois for like over a decade. Well, that's that's the last time I started paying attention uh, to To be fair, his name's also very fun to say, so changing it at this point is just... Uh, but yes, uh, the Greens had three. They had an increase of one last election. Oh, wow. Thanks, Wikipedia, for telling us. So Wikipedia is... Oh, God, do I want to bother to switch? No, you can just listen. Um, there are endorsements listed for each party. People's Party of Canada, no endorsements. Um, the Green Party was endorsed by Pamela Anderson and Neil Young. Of course. And there's a lot of... Oh, they even listed who officially endorsed no one. And uh, yeah, Rachel Notley, shocker of all shockers, endorsed the NDP. Oh, wow. Huh. Oh, yeah. Conservative Party, Jason Kenney. Got yeah, it. and uh, oh, and Brian Pallister. Oh. Keep that name in mind for later. We're going to talk about Brian Pallister a bit later. Rupi Carr, um, also, it looks like endorsed the NDP. She's one of three people. Who is Rupi Carr? Uh, she's a famous poet. Oh, do I look like I read poems? What's up? Do I look like I read poems? No, actually, you don't. Look, you don't really look like you can read, but now you are on Wikipedia, so 
I just want the fucking map. Give me the map. Ah, uh, man. Fill time. Fill time. Yeah. No. Um. So I okay. watched the last. Uh, I watched the last debate actually. Um. Because I hate myself. And right. you want the messenger base? I don't know. There's a joke there. Bad, bad. Yeah. You tr- yeah. You tried. And this happened last election too. But being that we were just talking about the block of Bitcoin, I feel like I should bring it up. I. I find it really funny, and it was worse last election, but it happened on this one too, where they have, of course, the debate topic of reconciliation. And every leader sucks at answering it every year. Like, nobody's good at this reconciliation uh, talk. But the other ones try. And I remember from the 2019 debate, uh, uh, Yves-Francois Blachette was like... um, the other, the, the, the First Nations are a distinct and special nation, much like the nation of Quebec. And they start making it completely about Quebec, and you're like, bro, bro. <laughs> that is classic Bloc Quebec. I was going to say, this is very on brand for the Bloc Quebec. It, it really is. And it, it was like lesser this time, but still along the same thing. It's like, we need to negotiate with the First Nations, like a separate na- a nation, much like Quebec needs to be. De- uh, de- to be negotiated with uh, the nation of Canada as a distinct nation. You're like, you're not answering the question about reconciliation here, bro. Yeah. This is also I, the guy where they were talking they about... Well, they want reconciliation. What about the rest of Canada reconciling with Quebec? This is also the guy, like, they asked a question about... Oh, I don't remember the exact bill name anymore, but the one where, like, you can't wear religious objects in a public job. Mm. And they mentioned that it's, like, pretty shitty. And he's like, I don't think it was shitty. And so I'm not going to answer that question. I don't think it was discriminatory was his exact words. Oh. And I'm like, but, but it is, <laughs> but it is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like the, the blog's whole angle is like, Oh, this uh, genocide. No, that was all the English. We had no part in it. We just kind of showed up and then they were deporting the Acadians. That was bad. And they were, you know, they cheated on the plains of Abraham. That was very bad. And we've just been hanging around. <laughs> Hold on to that 250 year old grudge. Actually, yeah. that's long. Is that 250? 1763. Do you yes. remember the date of the Battle of the Plains of Abraham, Josh? I remember the year. I don't remember. Well, I remember the year of the Treaty of Paris. I don't remember if that's the same year that the Battle of the Plains of Abraham happened. I'm, I'm actually impressed you remember that year because the moment I graduated, like grade eight, I forgot it. <laughs> Yeah, I usually associate dates with like things that I was doing in that year, and I can't quite remember what I was doing the year that the Battle of the Plains of Abraham happened. So mm. it's hard to like you know connect it with anything because I'm like yeah, I think I was really busy that year. I don't remember exactly what was going on in my life. Maybe I was in university. Yeah, anything over two hundred years is kind of an unfair ask, I think. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, the thing about the Treaty of Paris is that it ties into the French Revolution, which I love studying. So. Uh, in order to study the French Revolution, you have to study the processes before that, one of those being the Treaty of Paris, so... Mm, Canadian history. <laughs> you know, it actually goes, goes into European history, which is far more exciting, I assure you. There, there is some good um, Canadian history. I was listening to the... I, I have listened to the Cool Canadian History podcast, mm. which is, like, the content is often good, Um but it's like, he, so the guy has a very specific kind of vocal delivery. it will be like, so it was in 1876 when this particular prime minister went and picked up a penny on the sidewalk. He <laughs> fell down an open sewer and was trapped for days. Like that's like his intonation for the entire <laughs> like half hour. It's that man, very like- Albert Einstein. Yeah, it's a very like, put on voice and i'm like you you can just talk normal man and yeah he actually did one one of the first episodes i listened to was quite relevant and like would have been the great kind of thing for somebody to like you know write about read about tonight on the stream but it was how uh robert borden in 1970 1917 like kind of maybe like arguably stole the election it's quite interesting Mm -hmm. it's just like in I feel like what I notice about um, the way our history is taught in our school curricula is just really like dry. Like they teach you this extreme surface level version of history, 
and don't tell you about like so they did this other episode on Canada's first spree killer which was when I was listening to it I'm like this is even more interesting than you're making it sound and I sent it to a different podcaster because I was like you're gonna love this and he made an episode on it it's this guy who um killed a bunch of sorry he was um what was the order of ridiculous things he did um oh yeah he punched a cop got sent to jail got let out of jail shot a bunch of like teenagers walking to a party got put in an asylum became like best buddies with the asylum like coordinator person who like let him live in his house and <laughs> something like that and they gave him all these like experimental lsd treatments and they were like yeah he's reformed and i don't remember i think he was i think it was before the asylum when he was in sorry when he was in jail before and he was like shoving a broomstick out his ass and so As he, you do. yeah, so he eventually graduated from this program and they're like, hey, you're free, you can do what you want. And he's like, okay, I'm going to go to Israel and join the IDF. And uh, the IDF was like, hmm, uh, just, you know, say what you will about the IDF, but they did not let him in because they looked into him and they're like, wait, you're a mass murderer. I mean... That's just par for the course of the IDF, am I right? It was, but they, at least they did a background check because his next stop was to go to Rhodesia and join the Rhodesian military where they did not check. And he joined a race as a part-time military and was killed by friendly fire. Great stuff. Well, good for him. I was also off by four years in the Battle of the Plains of Abraham. It was 1759, so my apologies. Honestly, nobody would have fact-checked you if you had a cell phone. <laughs> I fact-checked myself. You sure did. Um, I did do a slightly prepared bit on Canadian election history. Should we get into it? Yeah. Okay. I, uh, I honestly, I found this more interesting than I thought it was going to, because I only vaguely remembered this story and I don't know what reminded me of it, but I was like, this is going to be a fun discussion. And I'm just going to keep stalling while I remember what app I wrote in. It's called Notes. That's what it is. It's called Memo. So the Memo app. We're all familiar with this. Yeah, have you seen this? Have you heard about this? Um, are you sure it's not pronounced Mimo? Yeah, in the Mimo app. All right. So do either of you remember Carolyn Parrish? I feel like I recognize the name, but I don't recognize what they're associated with. All right. Did she die? She or did not perish, die. As it were? We're getting to that point, okay? <laughs> okay this oh. will come up. <laughs> so, all right. So Carolyn Parrish was born, and I'm going to try to pronounce this correctly, uh, Carolina Janashevska in Toronto in 1946. Her sister, Marcia, is an award-winning historical romance novelist. Uh, what is, what's her name? Her sister, Marcia? Marcia... Oh, what's God, you want me to look this yeah, up? Yeah, absolutely. All right, all right, all right. I'm going to look up these books later. Um... I, I thought about doing a deep dive in the books, but there was just no time. I, what I did try to look at is, okay, so we're going to have to go to Carolyn Parrish first. Her sister is Marsha Canham. Can, oh. Canham. So she won two Romantic Times Lifetime Achievement Awards. So I don't know if Romantic Times is like the, you know, publication of record for romantic books or what. And this is multiple awards for individual books, including Best Historical of the Year, Best Medieval of the Year, Best Book of the Year, Storyteller of the Year, Best Swashbuckler of the Year. No citation, no links. So I hope this was all the same year. She was just like, boom. Just boom. collected. Just, just collected them. I record. <laughs> or it was just one book that was like a medieval squash swashbuckler that just swept <laughs> the awards. Like that's just how you sweep. But we don't know, like it could have just been like her household awards of like. You know, like you would sit down with your family at Christmas and it's like, oh, we're going to do superlatives. And it's like, best romantic book for you again, Marsha. Like, <laughs> there's, there's no link. There's nothing. But all of their family awards are just book related. And Carolyn Parrish is just sitting over there like, what the fuck? Yeah. Oh, just because I didn't write romantic fiction. Carolyn Parrish has won some awards at that darn table. I'll tell you this. Okay. Okay. So back to it. Um... So Carolyn Parrish won election as a liberal in 1993, 97, 2000, and 2004. So she served as basically a completely un, uh, obscure, unknown backbencher 
until February 26 of 2003. And here's the CBC headline. MP apologizes for calling Americans bastards. Oh, don't apologize for that. Yeah, I will never apologize for that. Vote well, for me. <laughs> we'll get into it. A specific quote was, damn Americans, I hate those bastards. <laughs> <laughs> I like that she didn't apologize for saying I hate them or damn them. She was just like, yeah, I mean, I guess maybe the bastard seems a bit much. I still hate them, though. Well, Fuck those guys. That's just your headline, like, editorializing, but... Um, Parrish clarified that she was referring to the administration of friend of the program, George W. Bush. <laughs> so uh, astute streamers will note that uh, February of 2003 was just on the eve of a fairly uh, important event in modern history. Isn't that right, Nicole? Yeah, absolutely. February 26, 2003 was... Um, the year that my dad turned 47. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then your dad participated in the invasion of Iraq, right? Yeah, That's totally. Right. Yeah, that was the, that. well, he didn't participate, but like he's, he definitely read about it mm -hmm. um, and uh, owned a gun. So like same thing. Basically the same thing. Yeah. So the, yeah, the context was that she was making these comments in earshot of a hot mic, and this was regarding the then impending invasion. So like, okay, oh, how hot was this mic? Was he like, on a scale of one to ten? <laughs> like, on a scale of one to magic mic. Uh -oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was magic mic, wasn't it? Yeah, on a scale of, no, we need to, we can, we can punch up one. What's, what's the least hot mic you can think of? The, oh. <laughs> Josh knows. I'm not going to dunk on our friends. We're going to um, no. no, we'll look for we'll look for a very not hot mic somewhere in our candidates here. Okay, uh, while you find your not hot mic, I'm going to go grab a uh, bottle of wine because All I feel right. like we'll be here a while. So we've already got uh, we've already got an intermission. I, I mean, I'm going to. Mike Myers back in the day was like, I would have done him, but like now he's getting kind of like, mm. I don't know, old and irrelevant. But this is a political stream. We got to talk about politics. How right, about sorry. Michael Ignatieff? Um, was he hot? Uh, yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, I don't know. Oh, who's that guy that was uh, running for the. Lester Pearson, Lester who was nicknamed Mike. By some dude. On a scale of Lester Pearson to Magic Mike, this my this microphone was um, a Michael Dukakis. A Michael Dukakis. Yeah. I don't it's not know quite... who that is, but it does have the name Dukakis, which makes me feel like mm. makes me think of two penises. So pretty hot. Oh, it makes me think of when the cock is due. <laughs> Oh God! You got your Wednesday we got night. Twenty minutes. This is this is this is how Nicole does her like Wednesday night plan sex, where she's like Ryan, the <laughs> cock is due. Mike, the caucus. That's right. So now uh, we have lost our map. Oh God, it's back! It's back. Um. Now I can't drag it. I hate Max. You hate maps. And it looks... Oh, see, it, and I was supposed to send a link to my coworker, and she loves maps, and she would have hated that, so I'm glad I didn't... Did you send a link to the coworker? No, do I Do you want to do that right now? <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah. Where, where would I find the link? If, like, I know, but, You like, posted it in the Discord, you'll notice. I posted yeah, it. Just have a look. I swear to hand to God here. Oh. I see what happened here. Yeah, you sure did. Oh, God. Oh, sorry. No, that's the StreamYard link. Is she just going to watch, or is she going to participate? Oh, she's just gonna watch. Um, well, then send her the Twitter account or the YouTube account or the Twitch account, all of which I know you've memorized. Yeah, totally. Are they? Are we streaming to those things? Yeah. Yeah, I know. I knew See that. these check marks? I think it'll actually say if I click the button up there. I'm actually afraid. Uh... So, does she want to watch on Twitch or on YouTube? <laughs> our 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 viewer is currently on Twitch, so they should go and jump on the Twitch. He's born under punches with his head. Because when Dave was like, hey, we're going to take care of you, we're going to get uh, one of his employees to set up this um, Twitch account because we're not allowed to stream on the Pimatoway Twitch account anymore because apparently our jokes are inappropriate. 
That's fair. Um, what's the, sorry, Born Under Punches? With a Z. So they, they were like, yeah, it wasn't available. And I was like, oh, we could have made a misspelling that fits with our other accounts, but you know. Born Under Punches, with, is it EZ? Yes. Born On Twitch. Like twitch.tv slash Born Under Punches. Okay. All right, well done. So, uh, and if we can direct your attention back to the electoral map, the uh, looks like Saskatchewan is going all liberal. That's if we're going to extrapolate the current map. That yeah. just means all all liberal. Yeah, liberal is that it's a mix. That's, that's a mix. Oh, this is this is uh, Ontario. Oh. Sorry, this is this is Manitoba, and that's Ontario. Oh, gotcha. I mean, okay. it, it's understandable. I mean, forgetting about Manitoba is basically a Canadian pastime. Yeah. yeah, I can totally, yeah, I mean, I can definitely see northern Saskatchewan going totally liberal. That makes sense to me. Manitoba, the gateway to Saskatchewan, as they say. <laughs> I stole that joke. So, no, I'm just extrapolating from the only writing. That's <laughs> leading by two writing. votes. By two votes. Buckley Bellanger? Bellanger. Bellanger. Buckley. That's a hell of a name. Gary, is that Vidal or Vital? Oh my God! Stephen King is running in Saskatchewan <laughs> as an independent, no yeah. party. You know what? That's just how he does it. And he's running against his sister Harmony King, who like doesn't, who writes like basically the same books as him, but like if everything turns out okay and it's fine and it's not creepy or weird at all, mm. doesn't have a child orgy in it for some reason. Oh, it has like lots of child orgies, but everyone's cool with it, and it's like oh. they, they just she, the way that she wrote it was like interesting in the way that it she made it like not creepy you know right. yeah yeah i was reading a margaret atwood, atwood book with a bunch of like child porn in it and you know oh was it in our yeah that's a good one yeah. it's interesting yeah there's i mean my dad read that book he was very he was he liked it but he was very mad that he liked it he's mad that he liked it. <laughs> yeah he was like oh yeah i just finished that stupid book but he like stayed in all day to finish that stupid oh, wow. book so i mean it's a good series overall like i've, I've read the three, three. Does your does your dad think all books are stupid by any chance? No, my dad. He, so he likes sci-fi. So I think that's where I got him was that there was like that like little bit of like okay, it's like you know some sort of technology that's gone too far thing is where I got him. Mm. Um, but yeah, no, my dad likes books. I think it is fun to read about like a world-ending pandemic book. Yeah, absolutely. Where... It's super fun. It's nice to read something that's like so out of like out of left field that it would mm -hmm. never happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, Carolyn Parrish. <laughs> right, sorry. Uh, where were we on that? Oh, right. So, she was commenting in earshot of a hot mic. <laughs> hey, oh. Uh, Michael Ignatiev, is that who we decided the hot mic was? Yeah, I think this mic was as hot as Michael Ignatiev, especially in 2004. Mm -hmm. Sorry, 2003. Yeah. We're not at 2004 yet. Can we, should we look up two pictures of 2003 Michael Ignatiev? Yeah, that's your problem. <laughs> well, look him up on here, and then oh, we yeah. can put him on the stream. So open, like, a new tab and share that. All right. So uh, she was commenting, and you're, let's really try to get to the sentence this time. <laughs> of a hot mic regarding the then-impending Asian invasion of Iraq, um, which, uh, as a side note, I will estimate, or it has been estimated anywhere between 100 and 200,000 excess Iraqi civilian deaths since the invasion. Oh, he was less hot in 2003, but you know, he, that's a, you know what, that's a good brow. Well, I'm definitely glad you were able to interject during the Iraqi <laughs> civilian body count to <laughs> tell us what you really think about Michael Ignatiev. So hold on, we need to actually live stream your opinions of Michael Ignatiev. So let's just switch our, let's just switch our tab here. Oh, I had to stop it to start. You know, there's a life lesson there. You have to stop things to start new things. Yep. All right. Now. Mm. See, here's... Which, which which ones are... Hot? That's... that's He looks like Nixon there. I don't like that. Yeah. I see. So I, so I like this one. He's got, like, kind of that little bit of a smirk. Like, he's, like, kind of, like, got that, like, teasing. Like, kind of, like, oh, like... Does he like you? Does he not? He's got the little smile on. This one, you know, he's got, uh... oh, there. Oh, he's so small. Oh, yeah, I can't make it any bigger. I do like that big grin. That's nice. Mm. Good smile is nice. You also opened a new tab, which is not being shared in the stream. Oh, okay. Well, here, let's, let's have a look at Lester Pearson. You tell me if this is a hot mic. 
Is his name is he, is he actually called Mike? Um, yeah, there was a whole thing. Hmm. On a scale of one to Michael Ignatius, I'd give him like a like. No, he's definitely on the lower end of the scale. Yeah, Michael Ignatius have never pulled off a bow tie like that. <laughs> is he pulling off a bow tie? Is that what's happening in that picture? Uh, yeah, it's the sixties. So. Mm. All right, so. <laughs> Sorry, continue. Yeah. Um, you know, we'll just leave it with Lester Pearson for a bit, unless you feel like fixing it. I mean, you can have the mouse. Oh, yeah. It's much more pleasant. Okay, so one more go. Context. She was commenting in earshot of a hot Lester Pearson regarding the then impending evasion of Iraq, which, as a side note, was estimated to have resulted in between one and 200,000 excess civilian deaths. No way to know. Big range. Mm hmm. As to whether Parrish is now vindicated in her comments, this is left as an exercise to the viewers. We'll take a quote from uh, then Alliance leader and also friend of the program, Stephen Harper. Mm -hmm. Parrish's comments don't do Canadians any good. Canadians who are trying to cross the border for business, Canadians who are trying to sell lumber or agricultural products or manufactured goods to the United States. Also, I have Lego hair. Lego hair? Lego hair. He had Lego hair. Who is this? Stephen Harper. You, you know who this is. Oh, guy. I know who Please. Stephen Harper oh, Jesus is. Jesus Christ. Sorry. So, I didn't realize you were recording. Okay, so to be clear, she was saying the Americans suck because they invaded Iraq. Iraq. We're planning, yeah. planning on invading Iraq. Please. Yeah, I think she was saying the U.S. foreign policy apparatus are bastards, and I hate them. Um, but you know what? What's that going to do for someone trying to cross the border for business? You know, they're going to like stop you at the, you know, the checkpoint. Be like, hey, hang on. Do you live in like the Toronto Mississauga riding? Did you vote for Carolyn Parrish? And they won't let you cross, and you will not be able to sell your precious softwood lumber. And this is, you know, this is why we have to have civility, mm -hmm. right? We have Naturally. to. I mean, have, to be fair, no one wants softwood. Any, day, any time of the day. This was this is how lame and impotent Canadians were. Is this was the biggest thing we loved to argue about in two thousand three, prior to the invasion of Iraq. Was how, we, how, how the Americans to. didn't want our software, <laughs> or they didn't want to pay enough for it. I can't remember which one it was. Mm. So, where were we? Right. Okay. Yeah. So I just anyway, I like that idea that somebody's trying to like sell stuff across the board. And it's like politicians were mean yeah because you know everyone is different that's, yeah that's we that's always stopped stuff before that's definitely stopped u.s relations before is someone calling americans a dick yeah mm -hmm. and uh yeah we have to respect everyone's opinion and if everyone wants to invade a sovereign country to knock off a dictator you don't like and you know kind of like it's the government, government you do in the process that's your choice my uh Grandpa believes that the reason that the Canadian American border is still closed right now is because Biden doesn't like Trudeau personally as a human and definitely not for any political reasons. Mm. So, I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. So after this incident, Carolyn Parrish received a stern talking to. Ooh. Uh, also a fun side note. Um, so John Cochin's comms director had resigned the year before for publicly calling Bush, quote, a moron. Whether this man is now vindicated in his comments is left as an exercise to the viewers. Do you think so, he's vindicated? The viewer is not the performer's job. So, the next year, Parrish ripped on Bush's coalition of the willing euphemism for its invading force by referring to some U.S.-led initiative I don't care to read up on as a coalition of the idiots, which is a joke that has its heart in the right place, but in my opinion, could use a little punching up. After this incident, Carolyn Parrish received a stern talking to. Parrish what was it in 2003? What? I'm trying to remember which liberal party or liberal leader would have been in 2003. I think Steve Martin still? Hmm. Mm, 2003 liberal? No, yeah. so 2003 was when Chrétien stepped down and, sorry, so the first talking to was from Jean Chrétien. The okay. second talking to was from Paul Martin. Okay, so I, I have my ear right. That. Yeah. Uh, apparently our Twitch stream is down, so let's have a look at that.
No, it's still working. Oh, all right. Okay, moving on. Oh, shit, let's bring that map back up. Girl, back that map up. Back that map up. Um, well, with the whole four polls reporting, Randy's ahead in Edmonton Center right now. Uh, which one's Randy? The Edmonton Center Liberal. Edmonton Center Liberal? Yeah. What a, what a place to live where your uh, candidates are so close. Your liberal and conservative candidates are like neck and neck. I, uh, since moving to Calgary, I've never been in a place where I felt like my vote was going to count for anything. Mm. I mean, that was like living up north, though. Yeah. I do like that as the certainty of like calling the writings moves across the map, this, uh, this one writing in like the middle of Newfoundland. Is just still well. It's close, I guess. That's probably why it is close. Oh, it's a li potential liberal lost there. The incumbent. Oh yeah, Scott Sims. It's a very close vote, though. Only seven hundred and fifty votes between the two. Mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't look like there's a lot of other parties for them to vote for. There's just the Libs and the NDP. And the how many uh, ridings have shown up here? There's three. Oh wait, how many? What? How many polls, sorry, are oh, left? Oh, it's like uh, 243 out of 246 or something, yeah. Okay, so it's probably going to be the conservative, but I can see why they haven't called it yet. Yeah, I think it's just like an algorithm. So, anyway, we're going to get back to uh, back to learning. So, she's now had her second talking to from her second prime minister. Um, yeah, so Parrish later explained Bush's re-election by blaming, quote, profound psychological damage due to the 9-11 attacks, whether she's been vindicated in these comments, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Damn. Now, this was just hours after Paul Martin held a caucus meeting to ask MPs not to say stuff like this. Parrish made a point of highlighting that she wasn't at this meeting and also that it wouldn't have stopped her anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's cute. That's like a, when you're a teenager and you're like, mom's like, I told you not to do this. And you're like, I don't think you did. I don't remember you saying that. And also, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I used to get in trouble all the time for making fun of conservative relatives. Because apparently even when I was even more, like I was more right wing leaning, I was still a fucking shitter. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad things haven't changed in that respect, even if my political leanings have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so after this incident, you know what happened? No, we don't. She started talking shit again? Um, Paul Martin followed up by making a joke about launching Parrish, quote, tens of millions of miles into the dark void of space, <laughs> which is actually kind of funny and indicates that Paul Martin had people writing jokes for him. <laughs> In, next, in November of 2004, Parrish appeared on world-famous TV program This Hour is 22 Minutes, stomping on a doll version of Bush, and um, w Wikipedia said performing voodoo on its head, which when I read it, I was like, isn't that one of those things where we now acknowledge that voodoo is like a whole religion and not just pins and dolls? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say stomping on a doll version of Bush and simply sticking pins in its head. Uh, which she claimed would do the least damage. Ah, uh, because he has no brain. <laughs> oh, man. This led to enough outcry, largely from conservative MPs, that it appeared her ouster from the party was impending. Incredibly, Parrish had something to say about this from the Globe and Mail, and I'm quoting the article here. Most liberals lined up yesterday to insist they would be on their best behavior during the visit, and Mrs. Parrish insisted that she would not heckle the president if he addresses Parliament. <laughs> <laughs> but as she prepared to meet Mr. Martin later Wednesday, she gave an interview saying she won't silence her criticism outside the Commons or toe Mr. Martin's line. Thank you for doing the camera work. Mm -hmm. and, and now they're quoting from her. And if he wants to know why he can't control me, I have absolutely no loyalty to this team. None, she said in an interview with the Canadian press. After what they put me through and lots of my colleagues, they can all go to hell. But he's not going to control me, so all he's going to do is end up looking weak. Ms. Parrish said she's not, quote, out to get Mr. Martin, 
but lost respect for him when he did not intervene in her bitter nomination battle with for, former MP Steve, who cares, uh, and does not care what happens next to the liberal leader now. If he loses the next election and ha he has to resign, I wouldn't shed a tear over it, she said. Prime Minister's office made predictable comments about how the PM uh, does not share Ms. Parrish's sense of humor. Uh, it's rotten timing, said Poindexter, don't give a shit, Sarnia liberal MP and huge dork. I think it's a pathetic spectacle and I would hope that she would consider mending her ways. But liberal caucus chair Andy Savoy, speaking before Ms. Parrish's criticisms of Mr. Martin ran on Newswires, had said she would not be kicked out of the caucus. He said the reason was not only because the Liberals have a minority on the Commons, but because her expulsion would only draw attention to her criticisms of the Bush administration. Mm. We wouldn't want that, would we? God, no. We, we wouldn't want people to think about those criticisms. Uh, I also like that they were like, he, he admits like it's partially because we only have a minority government. Like, <laughs> yeah, we would kick her out on principle, but we need the votes because we have a minority government. But also because we don't want people thinking about. <laughs> didn't he, didn't she also just say they can't control me, and if they try, they're just going to look weak? So that was that. So it says that he, this caucus chair guy, made this comment before she said that. Ah, uh, okay. I could have probably just switched the quotes around, but this is how the Global Mail put them in order. Oh, uh, okay. Well. So it's at this point I would like to know. That Bush never ended up addressing Parliament anyway, instead making his long-delayed first visit to Canada in Halifax that December. Whether Bush chose the coast in order to put a significant distance between himself and Carolyn Parrish is also left as an exercise to the viewers. <laughs> to no one's surprise, the Prime Minister kicked her out of the Liberal caucus, leaving her sitting in Parliament as an independent. To her credit, Parrish stated both that she regretted nothing and also that she would have done the same thing in Martin's position. Of course, she also took the opportunity to talk more shit about him and the party, saying, I've been very unhappy with this whole regime since the nomination process. It's a very brutal guerrilla war type occupation of the prime minister's office. This quote more than any so far upsets me personally because I am deeply offended by the implication that Paul Martin was capable of doing anything remotely cool. <laughs> yeah, he's that's... pretty milk toast. Yeah. The CDC article I pulled that quote from goes on to cite a bunch of her constituents, giving their thought, but I want to focus on one in particular. George Winter, who said he has been friends with Parrish for about 20 years, says she will no longer be able to represent her riding effectively because she'll have no pull in the House of Commons. Uh, his direct quote, her credibility is zero. With that in mind, we're now going to jump forward to May 19th, 2005. Martin's government was facing a very close confidence vote, and I know both of you are experts who know what a confidence vote is, but for uh, all the viewers out there and all of the um, viewers of this recording later, confidence vote, long and short of it, is if your government loses this vote, they dissolve parliament, call snap election. So it's, it's a vote on whether you get to stay in power or not. And yeah, there was like, 16 in a row that this government faced, but... Damn. Yeah, it was quite a time. I rem I do remember being a teenager and, like, trying to understand what confidence meant, and, like, my dad trying to explain it, and me being like, this is... What the fuck? I also had no idea what confidence was when I was a teenager, so... I did. <laughs> yeah. I did on both notes, because I was too confident about my abilities, and I knew what a confidence vote was. <laughs> hey, yeah. Fucking humble brag. Fucking political nerd. <laughs> Can't so, help it. Yeah, they were facing a very close confidence vote. So close, in fact, that once the major parties were committed to voting along party lines, naturally, it was coming down to where the independent MPs were going to land, including Carolyn Parrish. It's here that an opportunity was missed. See, the Speaker of the House only votes in the case of a tie. At this time, the speaker was a liberal, so everyone knew where that tie-breaking vote would go in the event of it being cast. The question was whether the liberals would be able to court enough independent votes to reach a tie. Um, and this is also, interestingly, at the time that, uh, do you guys remember Belinda Stronach? Did you just make that name up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I made it up. 
Um, she's this MP I imagined who got mad at the conservatives one day and simply switched parties to the liberals. Oh yes. I yeah, I do remember that one. Which is like a, such a perfect example of like, especially this era of Canadian politics where it's like, it's a team sport. Like I'm switching teams. Like, mm -hmm. do you have an ideology? No. Yeah. I was against this uh, piece of legislation, but now I'm for it because, you know, I'm mad at- Hooray, people. the whip system. Mm. It's really cool and good. Um, so, uh, and so it went that the Liberals were able to court enough independent votes, courtesy of the last person to make up their mind half an hour before the vote, a little-known independent candidate by the name of Chuck Cadman. Chuck? Chuck, Chuck? Cadman. Oh. Okay. Another name I did not make up. Okay. I thought you said Chuck Cabin, and I was like... That's right, Chuck Cabin. <laughs> yes, our friend Carolyn had actually committed to supporting the government well in advance, thus denying herself the chance to stand before Parliament and force Paul Martin into beg like a dog on his knees for the last vote he needed to stay in power. <laughs> I don't know exactly how Parliament votes play out, but I assume there's a ton of, like, uh, fucking Game of Thrones-y high drama where you just like stand up there with your sword and it'll be like, I shall cast the deciding vote. God, I wish. The most, ex the the no most exciting The most exciting thing about politics is so um, the uh, government and opposition benches are two and a half saber lengths apart in the Alberta legislature. I wish that was a system of measurement that we used in our day-to-day. -day. Sorry, is that yeah. a real rule, or is that something you just heard from a dude? That's when we went to the Alberta legislature. Uh, we learned about that. Is it so that MPs can't saber each other? It's literally because in the era when people would have swords and whatnot, it was so that when they drew their sabers, they would not cross, and thus actually, due I to the laws of... Yeah. It was literally, it was literally so that you couldn't accidentally cross sabers and actually get in a duel with somebody as a result of being pissed off. I feel like that could have been like a cool, effective, like way to address COVID restrictions is to tell people that they had to stay two saber lengths apart. Otherwise you have to do it. Yes. <laughs> and also to hand out sabers and demand that everyone wears, have sabers instead of wearing masks. Because then it's like, you or know. Or both. But make them more like make a Zorro mask so they cover your eyes. Just like a full on, like, oh, what are those ones that they wear? And fencing, the big fencing face. Oh, face. yeah. Yeah, the fencing face. That's what they call it. Yeah. Bad case of fence face. That sounds now, like it. This is just like what, like a tour guide told you when you were there? Well, Yes. Because I will say that, like, I used to do outdoor education where you would, you know, teach kids all these, you know, facts about stuff, whether it was, like, fire starting or, like, you know, the history of fur trading or whatever. And I'm going to tell you that there was a lot of things that we just repeated because that's how you were trained to, like, run the program. And then you look it up later, you're like, oh, that's that's not true. You do not lose 80% of your body heat through your head. Unless, you're, unless your head is like 80% of your body weight. True. Or your surface area, I guess. True. But that's not me anymore since the surgery. Mm. Thank God for that. All right. So she's given up on her chance to force Paul Martin to do dog tricks in front of her for treats. Um, and what she did was she chose the high road, which is what I'm going to call the boring road. Uh, letting not made up MP Chuck Cadman have the big dramatic choice that briefly made him the most influential person in the country that day. The speaker voted accordingly and the government was upheld as for the first uh, and so far only time in Canadian history, the tie-breaking rule was employed on a vote to defeat a government. The government was then defeated in another confidence vote six months later. <laughs> the, Mar the, the Martin government sucked ass. Like, it just did not have the confidence at all of Parliament. Yeah. Well, they're going through a rough time, and their acne was really bad. Give them a break. Mm -hmm. As uh, Ray Ferraro famously said on a hot mic, Paul Martin is terrible. But he was referring to a different Paul Remember? Martin. Now, I know that Josh and I know who Ray Ferrero is, but, like, for our viewers at home. So, yeah, this was a uh, classic hot mic moment. Um, you know, you're, you're behind the glass of the hockey game. You're surrounded by all these hot mics, presumably. And uh, they were speaking during a commercial break, and he was uh, making fun of Dion Phaneuf's voice. Um, and, you know, we should just 
<laughs> play this clip. Do we like have that? that? Like exp explanation of who Ray so, Ferreira is is just to start listing other names of people that I don't know. Yeah, it's it's really. Good. Wait, did you not actually know who Ray Ferreira was? No, not at all. <laughs> oh shit! Because I did. Yeah, no, it's free now. Yeah, so I the play a lot of that Did you make up that name, Fanuf? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Fanuf. We've had a we've we've had enough of him. All right, so how do I'm gonna go ignore that pun and pet my cat instead. Goodbye. Uh, is that what the kids are calling it? Yeah, these bring days? the cat back and see if the cat has opinions yet. Josh, you can't pet your cat on camera, mm. as we found out from that liberal MP. <laughs> oh, but it's happening. Mm -hmm. oh, it sure is. I have to stop before I start again. We've been over this. I've already made this point. <laughs> All right, let's see how well it comes through when we share audio. So the important context is that in addition to being an extremely uh, middling, not very good prime minister, Paul Martin was also a extremely middling, not very good NHL defenseman. So this is this is him talking during the commercial break. You hear Fanoff on the air when he came to the bench and he goes, Somebody fucking knows! <laughs> His voice is so high pitched. Oh, it's funny. Hey, Paul Martin is terrible. <laughs> Great times. Sorry, okay, who's this guy? So he's a he's a commentator and he's making the astute observation that one of the players in the ice has a very high voice. Okay. And so he's mocking his high voice. Right. And then offering the extremely constructive criticism that Paul Martin is terrible. To be fair, he wasn't wrong. Yeah, in no way was he wrong. Is there like a term like it's for like mocking someone's voice? That like are we making is can we like nix that? Because you know there's like body shaming and there's it's like, voice shaming. Yeah. It's, vo it's just called voice shaming. Mm -hmm. Well, you have to understand it was a different time. Hit like, shaming maybe. Yeah, it was 2012. It was a different. Different era, different generation. Mm -hmm. Back when pitch shaming was still fun. Yeah, back when you had ways of making fun of adult men. All right. So, where were we? Um, yeah. So, the tie breaking rules employed for the first time ever on a non confidence vote. Government defended, it was defeated uh, six months later. Oh, yeah. And Parrish informed her constituents that she would not run for re election. Thus, ending the interesting part of her career. She later became like city council person in Mississauga, and as far as I can tell, didn't do anything fun or interesting. So yeah, that's all we get out of her. But in case you were on the fence about how you feel about the star of our story, this excerpt from a magazine called Extra may help confuse you further. It related to the 2005 bill legalizing same-sex marriage in Canada. Uh oh. Quote, once one of the strongest parliamentary supporters of lesbian and gay rights, Parrish's feud with Martin seems to have had an effect on her personal beliefs. Though she claims to support same-sex marriage personally, she said her constituents oppose it and that she'll vote against the bill. Oh. Uh, I was like the coward's way out. You remember when being like ambivalent on gay marriage was like a mainstream plank of the Liberal Party platform? Yeah, I mean... It was better than the actively hostile that most of the conservatives had. I remember yeah. growing yeah. up in the North and everyone being like, hoorah, look at the conservatives making a stand against making that gay marriage bill happen. Alberta's making a stand. And then we yeah. had to be forced because apparently Alberta needs to be forced to do anything progressive. I Yeah, I remember actually when that bill was going through because I was, it was back in the day when I was going to church and my church – um had like a little prayer thing to try and pray that bill would not go through so that was cute and fun <laughs> and definitely not a indicative problem of small town conservative values yeah it was a nice little i feel like it's like a oh was, jesus they're projecting it quickly sorry to cut you off there nicole no no worries it was yeah one of the many notches in my eventual atheism belt i was like ah, that doesn't that doesn't seem cool or fair what does an atheism belt look like? <laughs> Let's see what color Alberta's looking. Nothing. Nothing. Wow. Oh, no, what? there's one. There's one by. Oh, Randy's still winning. We got 10 pulls now. Ooh. 
So there's got to be a joke there, too, because Randy is like the British word for horny. And James coming, there's something there. Shit storm's coming, Randy. Mm. It's cool that it's blocking my ability to zoom out. Uh, nothing for Edmonton Strathcona yet. Wow. Like maybe just nobody voted in Edmonton Strathcona. They just gave up. I mean, I sure didn't. Anyway, we can now enjoy again. Now the audience can enjoy Wait, is... Kelly Green. Oh. With the Green Party. I, I thought, first of all, like the West Jank thing, Um, I thought it said wank first and i was what's i was like oh boy that opens a whole avenue but no that might be how you pronounce it yeah but i feel like you're undermining me by not pronouncing it janky but but why why would it be janky because he's 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 janky looking well i mean yes but i i uh, phonetically i don't i don't see a way that you can make that janky uh last names come from languages other than english I, yeah, but I'm trying to. I'm trying. I'm trying to think of a language that uses a single consonant or a single vowel e as a an e consistently. It's probably Yanka. That'd language. be my guess. Well, I went to school with somebody whose last name was spelt the same, but said J was an F R, and she pronounced it Frankie. So, open a shot case. <laughs> of course. Actually, on, on that note, Charlotte Bronte. On that note, can we talk about how Jagmeet Singh needs to stop using antidotes? Ank, ank, please help antidotes? me. Antidotes. Antidotes. Are you been poisoning Jagmeet Singh? <laughs> yeah. He needs to stop saving himself from my poison. Blocks. I know no one wants yeah. to name Josh, but you're really telling on yourself. <laughs> if he stopped curing his poisons, I'd be I'd stop poisoning him. Is uh, it like, are anecdotes his thing? Oh, all the time, like every debate he's ever been part of. Yeah, I was in a riding over here, and someone came up and talked to me and said, I can't afford housing right now. And you're like, shut up, dude. Shut the fuck up right now. I like you, but you need to shut the fuck up. I can see what he's doing, but yeah. It, it just comes off super phony. Yeah. When I, I visited all these constituents and these well, not like, it reminds me of like a concert goer where they're like, you know, they're in Edmonton, like, yeah, Edmonton, best crowd we've seen all night, and then they go to Calgary, Calgary, best yeah. crowd we've had this entire tour. I was like, over in Calgary, and they said that this is dead Minton. Yeah, this is like a live Minton to me. And that's just it, like, it, 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 from Motley Crue. Oh boy. <laughs> that's brutal. That's fucking brutal. Yes, they did. That's that's pain. Um, but yeah, so that's that's the biggest thing I, I need. Well, first of all, he suffers from the same problem Trudeau has, where they need to take some like just some basic public speaking courses so that they're not stuck tripping over themselves on the spot. I mean, Trudeau still can't do that, but yeah. I mean, it you, undermines it. I, I really feel like I have to interject because this is an emergency. But we yes. do have a writing in which the Communist Party is running against the Marxist Leninist, Leninist Party. I love it. And this is uh, this is Edmonton what? Edmonton Greenbach. Greenbach. Oh, this is uh, one of my buddies is um, in this writing. Mm -hmm. Like running? Is no, 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 no. He is not running here. He's just a voter. Hmm. Okay. And he actually just sent me a message cracking a joke that uh, let's get the quote here. <clears throat> managed to get into voting in the last 30 minutes it was open. The Marxist Leninist party, party is one vote closer to getting into Parliament now. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll say this. So, Normally, I hate, like, when people invoke the concept of vote splitting, like, it often comes down to this idea that, like, there's really only two ideas, which is, like, left and right, and it's, like, extremely reductive, and it also kind of, like, it's this conversation where you're kind of just assuming that we're going to have first past the post. And that's like, we just have to accept that mm -hmm. instead of being like, wow, we should change the system. But with that being said, with the reality of what I have, I, f and the vote share they usually get, I feel like the communists and Marxist Leninists are kind of splitting the vote here. <laughs> 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 like, I don't know what the big, discrepancy like what the big rift is maybe some sort of ideological like but it's got to be something you can resolve in order there's just to run there's an ideological or, schism right here maybe well, one seat in the entire country for the first time ever 
What, what if like the what if the Communist Party of Canada is more Maoist, whereas we're looking at Marxist Leninism for the Marxist Leninist Party? Yeah, well, and if there's one thing we know about like Marxists is that they love to splinter an infight. Like it shouldn't be surprising. I mean, welcome to politics like 101. As soon as you have one ideology, they're just like there's just a schism waiting to happen. It's just very, very funny to me. Oh man, that dropped quickly. Oh, that just updated, yeah. Because yeah. yeah, uh, Mohammed was ahead, and now, I mean, to be fair, this is with three polls reporting, so. Yeah. <laughs> just like the one cardboard box, like, was just extremely progressive people, and the other cardboard box was just the most, like, racist reactionaries. They're just eyeing each other up at the polling station, like, just wait till we count our box. <laughs> but, okay. uh, but, yeah, moral of the story is that the leaders fucking suck at speaking. Every one of them. Every fucking one of them suck at speaking. Yeah, that's uh, that's fair. I, yeah. Um, Ooh, oh, that. one update on uh, the uh, the Sherwood Park Port Saskatchewan riding. Um, we have a Maverick Party votes. We have Maverick Party votes, baby. 17 yeah. of them. Does fucking, uh, I'm really sad that, uh, what's his name? Jim Ford doesn't run anymore. So back when, um, you know, shameful confession time. I grew up in Sherwood Park. The in my first ever federal election, which must have been like 2011, um, and I truly like didn't have much of a political ideology, other than like I don't think political parties is a good idea, which I still believe, but I didn't really have like a I didn't care that much, and so I was like, uh, I'm gonna vote. I just want to vote for an independent. We should just have independence in parliament, which I, I still believe. But this dude had a, uh, he, his road sign said like grassroots conservative on them, which like now I'm, I feel like if I looked at this guy's opinions, like this dude would be like probably people's party with the best of them or something. But uh, at the time he just had this like, um, he had a really, really particular ax to grind, which is that the Sherwood Park News, like the most like, white bread, ineffectual, uninteresting newspaper in the world, just reporting on like what kind of flowers they planted at the park, um, was I guess their own by probably a media conglomerate or something because he, um, he, he proudly called his newspaper Sherwood Park's only independent newspaper, which was like, like a printer paper pamphlet that he would just put in local offices and like the rec center and stuff. And uh, it was a truly one-man operation because I can tell you that this man did not have an editor. It was riddled with typos um, and, like, full of... Like, it seemed... It, from whatever... Whenever I read it, it seemed really, like, harmless. It was, like, full of folksy wisdom, but that folksy wisdom now is probably, like... Distinct racism? Or, yeah, or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. He's probably... Awesome. Got but I voted for that man, and uh, he did not win. <laughs> so... Um, I'm just looking at these candidates right now, and I'm coming to a conclusion purely based off of them right now. Um, it, is it possible for a political candidate to take a good photo for their their voting? Because the only one here who's got one that's worth a damn to me is actually the People's Party, um, John Wetterstrand. Everyone else does not have a good photo. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it helps if you have a wetter strand than everyone else. I was going to say, he's making <laughs> a better than that picture. <laughs> um, he, he looks like a good, wholesome farm boy, that John Wetter strand. Yeah, absolutely. Look at his plaid shirt. Hell I yeah. was just, yeah, the nice little fucking bangs over one side. Mm-hmm. I also oh. like that the CBC has this little, like, baked-in judgment of whether they think your party will possibly win a seat. Because like the People's Party has a purple bar, the Maverick Party just has a gray bar, which is the same as the Independent, same as the Marxist Leninist, same as the Communist. So like, they have this little color code. It's like, hmm, do we do we consider politi- or the People's Party real enough that they get a color this election? Well, do they? So do they pick their? Do the parties pick their color? And maybe those parties did not. Or like, is there like no co- color that's like associated with those parties? I mean, I think the, 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 the People's Party definitely associates with purple. They have, like, a royal purple on all their signs and billboards and stuff like that. Are they, are they monarchists? 
Probably. <laughs> Almost certainly. Uh, I mean, uh, so Tanya home, if her like slogan on all of her si lawn signs didn't just say, come home, I would be very disappointed. Or like, you could even take like a musical lyric to this, take me home tonight. <laughs> Hell yeah. Also, you can tell that the NDP candidate had a really thorough. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so bad. <laughs> yeah. You could tell he had a really thorough platform. And but he's up against a genius, so what do you do? If she wanted me to be aiding you with that joke, it's not happening. <laughs> Here's a fun fact about Garnet Jenis, and this is some political inside information you won't get anywhere but in the street. But my brother went to high school with that guy. Uh, and according to my brother, Garnet Jenis is a huge dick, a huge poindexter, and no one likes him. So, I mean, you can take that information with you to the bank. <laughs> a huge poindexter. Did your brother use the word poindexter? Um, he might as well have. I feel like that's where I got my love of the word is for my brothers. Okay. And also, like, poindexter, doesn't that just mean nerd? We've been over this. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But no one was paying attention to that. I also I have to go back. Also, <laughs> also, like, this does this man does give off the vibe of he at least was hung up on at least one coat rack by his underwear. At least one. Oh yeah. well that just makes me sad for him. I'd give him a pity vote for that. No, <laughs> Maybe twelve hundred and fifteen people did give him a pity vote. I've read his mailers that he sent to my parents' house. He's a clown. Mm -hmm. So do we want to hear the uh the nice I don't know if it's a punchline. It's the kicker for our uh Carolyn Paris story. Oh, I thought the Carolyn Paris story was over. The Carolyn Paris story proper is over. But you know how sometimes you have an epilogue where like, you get to see what a side character is up to? Yeah. There's got to be one movie that has that. So. Um, this is like the spinoff story. Yeah. This is like the Joey this, after Friends. Yes. This is one of those things where I clicked on a link and I went, oh, no, this could be an entire other write-up on its own. Okay. Well, then uh, we'll look forward to the follow-up one next week. So. In the aftermath of Parrish being kicked out of caucus for going back a bit, mm -hmm. Manitoba Conservative MP Brian Pallister, if you remember that name. Pallister. We were talking about it like at an hour ago. Yeah, I remember that. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> read a poem in Parliament. Now, it should be made clear that from my very brief um, Google searching uh, while driving down to Calgary, Brian Pallister has read at least two poems during his time in Parliament. Oh, Amazing. Boy. boy. And those are... But, mm, hold, your, hold your opinion until you hear it. Was one of them the cremation of Sam McGee? Because if it is, he already has my heart. No, no, no. These are poems he wrote. Oh, I already hate him. Yeah. So he has also made a lot of very fun... Con I'll, I'll do the very fast rundown of this article I found. Um... So um, when he was back, when he was an alliance guy, and the progressive conservatives were, you know, allegedly progressive, um, he described the progressive conservative party as like a whiny, bitchy Dalton camp with PMS. Um, he also dodged a reporter's question by blurting out that he was giving quote a woman's answer, something he clarified helpfully uh, is an answer that is quote fickle. Um, and then there are, yeah, so that we have these quotes on um, holidays. In 2013, the Manitoba Tory leader wished all you infidel atheists out there a Merry Christmas, although he confessed, I don't know what you celebrate during the holiday season. <laughs> <laughs> I myself celebrate the birth of Christ, but it's your choice, Pallister thankfully clarified. Oh, thanks, man. I, uh, I spend... Um... I spend my Christmas getting hammered off of a box of wine. It's a it's a tradition at this point. Uh, fish swim, birds fly, and Josh gets hammered off boxed wine during the holidays. Mm, and then I help my mom make Christmas dinner because I'm the only one allowed in the kitchen when she's making Christmas dinner. That's a that's a hell of a compliment. To it really is. In the kitchen when someone who's made Christmas dinner for your family for years is like it's, cooking. It's because we uh, we work around each other very well, and we're both assholes to people who come in the kitchen while we're working on stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah. for the record, Josh makes a hell of a trifle. Mm. It's no, yeah, no always, trifling matter. He's always trifling with me. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I win. I win. Get out. <laughs> so, this is we're getting to the good stuff. 
Then in 2014, Pallister informed the Manitoba legislature that he hates Halloween. I hate Halloween, Pallister remarked. I always have. I don't like the deceit of it, he elaborated, adding that trick-or-treating isn't good for the integrity of the kids. <laughs> so he just doesn't like fun. Yeah. Sound, sound like that, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And then um, back when he was a Canadian Alliance MP, Pallister recited a raunchy poem back in 2004. So this is two poems in the same year, at least. Okay. Um, he was attempting to make some kind of point about the literal government's immigration scandal, scandal I cannot remember. Pallister suggested, and this is extremely bewildering, I don't understand. Pallister suggested foreign doctors and nurses could, quote, improve your chances by stripping first. Or another oh, line, boy. Of, quote, your chances expand if you do the full Monty. Don't let them touch you or else you'll get fined, Pallister added. It's the liberal bump and grind. What? Now, they have a recording of this on SoundCloud, but it doesn't play on here. Mm. Um, I listened to it on the drive down and it's extremely bizarre. So that's that. That's his one poem. Okay. So this man decided he needed to write a poem about Carolyn Parrish being kicked out of the Liberal Party. And this is this is where our wonderful pun on Carolyn Parrish comes in. Oh no! I hate being the second person to think of this pun after Brian. Yeah. Pallister. Well, he he yeah he also made he he matched upon her first and last name. So this is November of 2004. Um, yeah, this is this is from the public transcript. So you can just read all this online. Winter is coming. Christmas is near. The anti-American carolers cheer. Damning those Yankees with all that they've got. Carolyn, Carolyn, perish the thought. Oh, that's kind of good, though. The carolers sing out the simplest of tunes. All Yankees are brutish, warmongering loons. Never thinking that they're the best friends that we've got. Carolyn, Carolyn, perish the thought. Okay, first of all, stop simping for America, you goddamn bootlicker. Well, I've not done the poem, Josh. <laughs> their soldiers, their firemen, had husbands and wives. They stood up for freedom. They paid with their lives. But the anti-Americans have already forgot. Carolyn, Carolyn, perish the thought. Canadian farmers cannot sell their beef. Too much is their cattle. Abundant their grief. But the literal liberal relief pan has let them smoke pot. Carolyn, Carolyn, perish the thought. <laughs> but the carolers' chant is unwise and untrue. To quiet them, a piece of duct tape would do. But the prime minister needs all the friends that he's got. Except Carolyn, Carolyn, perish the thought. Damn. And that concludes the story of Carolyn Parrish. <laughs> you like kind of like it sounds like, like bro. Like, it sounds I, like a Christmas I, story. Like you would read that to your kids, and there'd be like reindeer and stuff in it. It's right in that like Dr. Seuss meter, which is quite funny. Yes. It is like I will say this for a lot of people who have like annoying things to say and have a poem. My usual complaint is that they just have no sense of like meter. Like, they don't actually know how to, like, make their lines match up. The meter here is perfect. It's Maybe flawless. you say that they don't meter expectations? Um, no, in this case, he does. So I don't know why you're saying that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's extremely lame and jingoistic. But, like, I don't know. I feel like I would like to, uh, Sorry, let's say what, this. What does jingoistic mean? It sounds like a slur. A jingoism um, is like a uh, hyper militaristic, like patriotism kind of deal. Like yeah, you're, yeah, it's like yeah. it's patriotism, but you're like it's more of a negative connotation. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, I have, I, I have, I have more Maxi and Bernier news, by the way. Okay. Well, anyway, between our liberal friend Can Carolyn Parrish and our conservative friend um, Brian Pallister, I would just like to ask our. MPs in general to rip on foreign leaders more and recite poems in parliament more. Like, I don't care what you believe, just do more of that and we'll have... I feel like there's recently a poem recited in parliament, actually. Like, within the last couple of years. I remember whom or why, but I feel like there was. I want to do some digging to find out exactly how many poems Brian Pallister recited in Parliament in total during his entire political career? Because I feel like it's got to be more than just two. I feel like this was his thing. I also kind of want to know, like, has he written any, like, poems? Actual poems? Yeah, yeah. Like, like a book of poems that we, like, haven't, like, read? 
And like, how many times, how many like notebooks does he has of, have of like books that he, or like poems that he's written and then like crossed out and been like, no, that's not it. Uh, according to CBC, uh, Maxime Bernier has again not gotten his seat. <laughs> Which writing is it? I don't know. Just a second. Uh, next, yeah. I'm on the map, so you you figure out Maxime Bernier's writing. Yeah. Yep, can do that. Uh, he is uh, not a huge shocker here that Heather McPherson is leading. I so one of my predictions. Um, early on was that not a single, whoa, uh, oh, sorry, that's BC, that not a single riding in Alberta would flip. Mm -hmm. um, I forgot to set the stakes for that bet at the beginning. Like, what was I going to do if I was wrong? Um, shave your head. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's uh, Quebec um, abuse, B-E-A-U-C-E, -E, Quebec. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, if, uh, if a single, for every riding that flips in Alberta, I will drink a horrible cocktail that one of you guys gets to suggest. Yep. Oh, hell yeah. During, during our next election stream. That's okay, fair. So uh, I'm going to La Belle Province. Where, where am I going in Quebec? Uh, I, I'd imagine South Central Quebec, uh, Beauce or whatever. Near one of the cities? I expect outside of the city, but in Sorry, that sort it's of called Boos? B E A U C E. Like Boos. Yeah, it's a conservative riding. So look for a conservative riding now um, because it's, it's been called by CBC. Uh, oh, yeah, you just go on Wikipedia. Okay. It's there in that, like. Bottom wedge. I think it's in. I thought I saw it there. Uh, go right go this way. Yeah, to the right. It's that one? No, never mind. I lied. I don't know. Go down. Yeah, it's not way the fuck up there. It's got to be. Trying, Josh is just trying to trick you into going down on him. I don't know if he caught that. <laughs> like Typical. maybe if I say it in the right way. Down, down. <laughs> wait, now you're just messing with me. Yes, I am. Uh, second. Wait, wait. Uh, I gotta be able to compare a map to a map. This isn't that hard. Yeah, I'm Even looking more. it up right now. Just the tip, Kelly. How do I zoom? <laughs> <on this? laughs> yeah, well, How do these computers work? They don't compute. Uh, the writing is located in central Quebec to the south of Quebec City. Oh, wait, I think I was treating the St. Lawrence as the border, and that's not how it works. So south of Quebec like City, it. and you'll have uh, the rioting there. Yeah, like it's on the south side of the... No, you're going too far north. Well, you said it's near Quebec City, right? South of Quebec City. Like due south of it. Yeah. Well, this is Quebec City right here. All right. Uh, just a second here. Uh, what is the leader? The, lead, the incumbent is Richard uh, Lehu or Leho. I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> French names are bullshit. Oh, yeah. L E H O U X. You tell me. I don't have time to think about words. I'm trying to figure out where this fucking writing is. I'm trying. There's like. It's here, right here, here. It, I'm going to post it in Discord. If you want to look in there, uh, you can compare map to map then. I'll put it in the green room. There's a real Discord between the two maps. Yeah. It'd be easier if you had two monitors, Nicole. Yeah, well, not all of us can afford two monitors, Josh. Fun fact, I actually found this monitor when I moved into the house in the closet. I expect it was Daniel's at one point. Uh. <laughs> This is so, wait, is this? Oh yeah, this whole bottom thing is Quebec. That's not New Brunswick. <laughs> How did you think that was New Brunswick? I, I was very zoomed in, both. There, there it is. Go. I found it. Yeah. Like I said, I was treating the, yeah, the who? Richard Le Who. So yeah, Max and Bernier. Le Who, I don't know. <laughs> 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 but yeah, uh, Maxim Bernier has again lost his seat. Hell yeah. I love and by that, 
He didn't even have a seat. I love how they called it and there's only 55 polls reporting. That's how uneven it is. Oof. Sorry, Max. I like Mad Max something. does it again. I always feel like having two first names makes you seem a lot more important. I'm looking at Philippe Alexandre, which is like, I don't know. It's just sound, it just makes you sound way more important as you get two first names. Well, we got another free party and a marijuana party. It's already legal. Yeah, you don't need to run anymore, bro. Sebastian, like, what are you running for at this point? Josh, can you please look up the marijuana parties platform for us? I sure can. I had this thing. I remember when marijuana became legal and everyone was like, I, there was a group of people that was like, okay, yeah, but like, there's still like, there, there was only like one law before about marijuana and now there's like 30. And I'm like, yeah, because the one law before was no. And now it's <laughs> yes, but like, I was like, that's not like a, a thing you can protest. So it's like, oh, yeah, man. It's, 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 children. <laughs> it's like, yeah, like maybe, maybe that's okay. This is uh, a really bad website, first of all. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to not use their website, instead rely on Wikipedia because- Oh, can we bring up their website? Uh, you absolutely can. I'll drop it in the green room as well. Uh, and that way you guys can just follow that link. Where is that? Help. Help. It'd be really clever if we were like visible. Oh God. Yeah, just it's look directly at the light. light. How does that look? That's great, thanks. Can you, how do you? Here, I'll put it right above the screen so it's centered. How does right, that look? Right in her eyes, put it right in her eyes. There you go. Yeah, you, you get the spotlight. Left. <laughs> okay. I hate this. I hate it too, I don't mind. I, like, oh I feel like I'm being interrogated. Okay, how do you, help? Yeah, what's going on here? What are you doing out this late, huh? Oh, I can't see, this is why we need. Yeah, okay. Along. Nothing to see. I can't. Okay, so so I, I, I've got some. And Josh is sending us a link, and I don't know where to find it. Oh, and it's in green room on Discord. Oh God, bro! Don't tell him the secret name of our. What you said is where the writing is. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I did. You asshole! Why weren't you listening? No, I just thought it was the only thing you sent. You were being oh. a dick. Oh yeah, it's can like you, a GeoCities. Can special. you share this to the so people can see it? Uh, I have to open it in the other thing, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Command C. I love that they can true include the control button, even though it doesn't do anything anymore. Mm -hmm. like, what, the control what button? It? Yeah. Oh it, uh, not if not on a Mac. Yeah, it's on a Mac. Right? Oh. They're like, oh yeah, you oh. control. What if we just added the word command? What's the difference? Well, it's in a more awkward thumb position. Like, what's well, the imagine using a Mac first of all. You, you, Josh, you take it up with Ryan, okay? Not with me. Hey, I made a joke. I, I, I wasn't listening because I'm mad. And, and I believe, I, you better believe I will take it up with Ryan. You want us to tee, tee you up for it again? Uh, no, that's fine. Okay. It was not good. What do we do? Oh, yeah, we were going yeah. we to share it. Yes. Please share this awful website because it's really bad. All right. We are going to... Also, marijuana party just is a funny phrase because it's like, oh yeah, I'd have one of those. I'm not going <laughs> to vote for it, but oh, oh, follow the money to its source in capital letters to understand why capital letters cannabis was criminalized. Uh, Longley's loophole through the political contribution tax credit enables individual Canadian taxpayers participation premiums through an electoral district associations. I do not know what that means. Nope. All right. So the only thing under about us is contact us. It's like you want. Yes. To know, it's like the Tinder profile. Anything you want to know, just ask. Like yeah. So um. Wait, there's one candidate. Hell yeah. Hold on, but this was a no, no. no. They have they have nine candidates this year. They have nine candidates this year. Okay. Um. Would you to update the party policies? <laughs> <laughs> Party policies of the marijuana party. Marijuana legalize revolution. Wait, you want to legalize revolution? So they've got fifty percent of their platform covered. They're just waiting for us to legalize revolution. Okay, so I, I have a I have a breakdown of why they apparently still exist. Yeah. Well, if I can offer my suggestion, it's like people make the argument that if you decriminalize drugs, they'll lose usage to the fact that it's not taboo anymore. So maybe the idea is if you legalize revolution, it will make people docile. They won't want to have a revolution anymore if it's like, well, if the government lets me, it's no fun. <laughs> so that's actually how they keep control over us. And the marijuana party is an op. Sorry, go ahead, Josh. 
Underneath the heading, Criticisms of Canada's Legislation, 2019 to Present. In June 2018, the party's leader, Blair Longley, addressed concerns about Canada's cannabis legalization plans, referring it to Prohibition 2.0. Referring to Canada's legalization plans, he said, there's this slight bit of progress, but when you look at the bigger picture, it's nothing close to what we would want. He said that, quote, legalization is great if you're rich and old and have your own house and can afford to buy expensive marijuana. But if you're still young and poor and don't own your own house, it's worse than it was before, Un end quote. In relation to this, Longley brought up some varying restrictions across the country such as landlords in Nova Scotia being granted permission to ban cannabis use and cultivation on their properties, and Calgary City Council passing a bylaw pro uh, prohibiting, prohibiting pot consumption in public. Another issue he brought up concerned people's limit to only being able to grow up to four marijuana plants per household, while people can brew as much beer and wine as they want and grow up to 15 kilos of tobacco. Has one single person since the legalization of marijuana been actually arrested for growing too much pot? Uh, that's a I good question. I don't know. I just... Uh, I just uh, so, okay, so their platform is the legalization is done wrong and they're still mad about it. Yes. Other sure concerns... Of, just run as a Green Party candidate and have this platform. Other concerns about Canada's marijuana legal, legalization include tough penalties for those who break drug laws, such as prison sentences up to 14 years, providing marijuana to a minor or selling it without a license. There are also concerns about restricting sales to government run monopolies, which favor large producers and make it very difficult for small businesses of the market. Well, that's, that's not an Alberta problem. Yeah. I also kind of, yeah, I can, that I can, part, I can get that, but like, yeah, yeah. It's like, again, if that's your whole platform, you're not going anywhere. Well, and the thing is like, it, it shouldn't just be a, marijuana problem to begin with you should just de decriminalize drugs to begin with mm -hmm. so um critics have concerns about the stake of producers and private companies such as owning patents to names and genetic strains mm -hmm. longley has re been referred to as skeptical about the quality of the bud commercial producers are putting to market and has said there's an opportunity for the black market to offer better quality marijuana at lower prices since the announcement of Canada's legalization plans, Longley said the party is being run on, quote, broken, a broken shoestring budget, unquote, and is getting, quote, more and more broken and shorter and shorter all the time, unquote, and questioned whether the party would be able to remain registered. The party needs 250 men member signatures so it can be registered with Elections Canada. Well, apparently it's still making that because it is still registered as of this election. Yeah, but they haven't updated their website because they have in all caps, we succeeded in staying registered in 2019. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, this website is just amazing. Like, they haven't updated anything for this election. Under party history, they have a link that says Marijuana Party website, which, like, we're already on. And then it tells you that there You can are look at the archives. Things. Wow, that's what I want to see. And under... The section party leader, it simply says invitation to the party forum. Do they have no leader anymore? They have a read. Uh, Longley is their leader, apparently, oh, still. Really? I've had enough of this website. It's a brutal website. It is really bad. <laughs> it is interesting to note that while there are now writings being called in Alberta, um, the that writing in, in Newfoundland, Still not called. There's 245 or 246 polls reported, and there's a 569 vote. Well, the, it's going going down because before it was 750. Oh, yeah, uh, it's I, closer than it was. But I don't know yeah. what the biggest swing they're likely to get in one. Well, that's just it. With one poll reporting, I don't think you're going to get over 500 votes in one poll. Oh, here we go. They're starting to call. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. What a surprise. That's a lot of blue. That's a lot of blue. Gosh, golly, oh, yeah. Jay. What Go is the uh, current? Wow, they're they so the okay, yeah, the liberals still have his high yeah, yeah, yeah. You look at the leading and it's higher. Um, this is a case of when you have conservative hotspots like Alberta and Saskatchewan, they get to call them a lot earlier than the more mm. contentious areas. It is, um, this is one like just random thought, but I was uh thinking about it because, um, there is a 
TV that I have been seeing a bunch recently, long story short. And, you know, it's just one of those TVs that's like always on loop and or always playing in a room. And every time I walked by, it was like, or if you stopped in this room, the TV would play probably 16 conservative attack ads in the space of an hour. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I need to not be in this room. And like, I usually, like, I hate TV attack ads because it's like an election and it's like, all right, every one of these ads is going to be about how a different party leader is a piece of shit. Mm -hmm. Nothing about what their platform is about. And like the conservative ones are especially embarrassing. Like when they had that one that was, this was way back in like the Stefan Dion election where they were, um, he was talking about like, hey, maybe we should uh, talk about like how the military works in front, uh, in terms of emergency response or some like pretty pedestrian thing. And the conservatives ran those attack ads that were like, Stefan Dion wants soldiers with guns in our cities. And it was like, oh my God. Actually, uh, oh. this uh, there's an old game that uh, has a radio in it, and it actually might have the best um, satirizing of American-style attack ads that I've seen in a very long time. So I might quickly send you this video, and I think you'll you'll appreciate it. I, yeah, um, but so I, what I noticed this time was that all of the um, attack ads this time were centered around like Justin Trudeau promised there would not be a pandemic election. And then there's like a quote of him on his video saying Canadians do not want a pandemic election. And they're like, seems like he lied about that. Can you trust him? And like, it seems kind of selfish to put your like, oh, you can you, you're projecting to win a snap election over your promise of not calling a pandemic during an election. And I thought about that and I was like, you know, I can find no fault <laughs> with this attack ad. Like, do people not know they're being recorded or they just like, they, they just know they're going to win the election, they don't care. That's, yeah, I think that's the thing is it's like, it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't, yeah, it kind of, like, it just doesn't matter what you say. Like, they didn't have to mischaracterize or twist your words. You said it and like, everyone will agree. Like, nobody really wanted to go vote right now. Yeah. But you did it. Mm-hmm. Good, good, good job. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, not a big fan of handing it to the Conservative Party, but, you know, they picked the right angle on that ad. Okay. Uh, I'm going to put this in the green room, Kelly, uh, if you wouldn't mind putting this up. These are, All right. this is, this is American style attack ad satirizing at its like finest. This better be good. We're over time. I mean, we're going to be over time. This is a uh, political race here. I have to pee so bad. Well, I'm bailing out of here, so because I got I got place to drive. Michael this, Red. This looks a lot like more like some weird anime video game you're playing. Well, this is literally a Western video game made by a Western studio, so good try. <laughs> I mean, anime is just anything I don't like, so... I'm glad that you're making that clear. Yeah, I was gonna say, is that why you have the famous enemy in your phone? Yep. Last year, Democratic candidate Michael Redden swapped sports oh. utility vehicle. Three months later, there were two separate incidents of hit and runs by an unidentified SUV in his area. Is Democratic candidate Michael Redden to blame? Can you afford to take that chance? Can your children? Vote Republican Senator Robert Thorne, a candidate that has never committed vehicular homicide. Democratic candidate Michael Redden has never publicly stated his opinion on child pornography. Just because he's hiding something, would you, you want a child pornographer voting on this nation's laws? <laughs> Do you trust your children's future to someone like that? Vote Republican Senator Robert Fuller, the candidate that is committed to locking up child pornographers. Democratic candidate Michael Rebens recently sued Senator Robert Fuller for accusing Rebens of being a murderous child pornographer. But Rebens had previously said he was against clogging up courts and frivolous lawsuits. <laughs> would you make him a hypocrite? Would you want a hypocrite as your next congressman? Would you want your children to become hypocrites? Vote Republican Senator Robert Thorne, and <laughs> not accused of being a murderous child pornographer. Yep. That's that. that, that, that <laughs> yep. That, that's here. what you might want to actually close here. that. You might actually want to close the YouTube tab because you have autoplay on. I hit stop sharing. Yeah, that, does, that doesn't mean the audio stops sharing because it comes through your mic as well. Mm. We got a hot mic here. Mm-hmm. Got a hot mic. I got a hot bladder. I'm not gonna piss. Uh, yeah, which one of you prepared an elaborate pun to end the show on tonight? Uh, I think it was Josh's turn. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good at puns, though. 
Yeah. Uh, can I go on a long monologue instead, like um, like on the yep. Jimmy Kimmel show or whatever? Yeah, the fuck are you ready? Is? You're going to begin your monologue in three, two, one, go. Remember, 